breach on actual due date that is when the performance is due is covered breach after starting the contract but during the course of performance is also covered so what would be anticipatory breach anticipatory please understand the meaning of the word anticipatory you are anticipating it you are anticipating it that means you are expecting it you are probably foreseeing it you are kind of you know uh, predicting it anticipation means expectation so anticipatory means expectatory that is you know that possibly you cannot perform but when before the contract becomes due before the contract becomes due now in this very case this this was the portion wherein if the promise of breach the contract it will become actual breach so this was the portion for actual breach and this would be the portion wherein if the promisor is breaching the contract it will be anticipatory breach that is before the due date we have entered into the contract on 1st jan the performance is due on 10th jan let's say on 4th jan i come to your place and tell you that possibly on 4th or uh, possibly on 10th jan i'll not be able to start with the contract i have abc limitations i have these many reasons and because of these things i'll not be able to start with the contract so you please give this contract to some someone else some else contractor so before the due date has come i breach this contract i come and tell you i let you know that i'll not be able to perform now you will ask me why would anybody go and let the promise you know that he will not be able to perform before the due date look many a times we know that we will not be in a situation to do something on a future date let's say he as i said he has to go somewhere abroad or let's say there is dearth of uh, labor he is not able to get labor or possibly he is not able to get building material or he might think that he has agreed to do the contract at a very small price and at that price possibly he might incur loss so what he does is he goes to the promisee and lets him know that he will not be able to start with the contract on the due date he is going to the promisee before the due date now in this case if he goes on 2nd jan 3rd jan 4th jan until 9th jan on any day if he goes and refuses to perform that will be called as anticipatory breach however if he goes on 10th jan that is when the contract is due that will be called as actual breach so any time before the due date the promisor refuses to perform that is called as anticipatory breach because he is anticipating that he will not be able to perform the contract on the due date he is expecting it he knows it he foresees it so before the due date he goes and tells him just to maintain the relation so that the promisee can you know make some arrangement and start the contract on the due date he might be able to find some other contract in the remain contractor in the remaining days the only purpose of you know going and telling him in advance is 
so that to help him make some arrangements he can do some arrangements and hire some other contractor or he can make some other arrangements so that damage is not done to him or much of a damage is not done to him delay is not caused to him okay so this was actual breach and anticipatory breach in both the cases you have to remember the promisee can claim compensation that is the person who is the victim party here who is the aggrieved party here whose contract has been broken in this case your contract was broken i did not perform the contract so you get the right to claim compensation claim damages from me now damages means recovery of the loss the loss that you have suffered now let's say because of me breaking this contract your contract uh, gets delayed by a month and you lose one month's rent so now i'll be liable to pay you the rent that you have lost again since the time we entered the contract now the prices of building material has gone up by 10% now if you go out and search for another contractor he will charge you 10% more because the prices of the building material has gone up by 10% so now i am liable to pay you to compensate you to reimburse you 10% of the contract price because that is the loss that you will suffer because of my cancelling the contract my breaking the contract so you get a right to recover the loss but for this it is important that at first place you incur a loss if you do not incur a loss there is no question arising for compensation the compensation will only come when you incur a loss let's say in this contract the prices of building material go down by 5% now if you give this contract to some other contractor he'll charge you 5% less now you are in a beneficial position leave alone incurring the loss you are almost making a profit you are saving 5% of the contract price so now in this case you do not get a right to claim damages from me you do not get the right to get compensation from me because for me to incur a liability to compensate you it is important that you incur some loss otherwise what do i compensate i'll compensate you when you incur some loss but if you do not incur any loss i'm not supposed to compensate you now please remember in both these cases the aggrieved party gets the right to compensation gets the right gets gets the right to claim damages claiming damages as i said is the right to claim compensation against the loss okay now there's one thing we need to discuss about anticipatory breach anticipatory breach helps you to minimize your compensation because you give time to the promisee to you know do some makeshift arrangements and minimize his loss because he has time and in that time he can you know possibly arrange some things arrange some other contractor arrange some other seller arrange some other buyer any, any anything which will help him to reduce the loss so it it's kind of uh, you know uh, repair work it's kind of uh, reduction in loss you are trying to minimize the loss and you know possibly on the due date 
the contractor might not uh, i mean the promisee might not be in a position to find some other contractor but you tell him one week in advance that possibly you will not be able to go ahead with the contract he might do something so it will bring down the loss so it is in the benefit it is in the interest of the promiser if he is refusing to work if he is refusing to perform he should possibly tell the other party in advance now there is one thing very important in case of anticipatory breach now i'll take the same example once more this is the date of performance or uh, date of contract first then the contract needs to be started on 10th jan and it will be completed on 10th april now what i do is i do an anticipatory breach of the contract i come to your place on 4th jan and tell you a boss i cannot perform the contract you find some other contractor now in this case you have two options what are the two options that you have first you can consider the contract as breached there and then itself on 4th jan you can assume you can consider the contract as broken and you can proceed against me in the court to recover whatever damages you incur or the second option which is available to you that is wait till the 10th jan wait till the actual due date of performance keep the contract alive you give me time to tell me today is 4th jan okay you have come to tell me that you cannot perform the contract on 10th jan but there is still almost a week left possibly the things might come into place by 10th jan and you might be in a position to perform the contract so we wait till 10th jan so now in this case what you doing you not cancelling the contract there and then you are not considering the contract to be breached on 4th jan however you are keeping it alive and you are waiting till the actual due date till the due date of the contract so you are giving me time so now you have two options first to cancel the contract to consider it as breached on 4th jan or to consider it as breached on 10th jan that is keep the contract alive till 10th jan give the promiser some time till 10th jan which will possibly you know you are optimistic about this uh, this thing that possibly till 10th jan i might be in a position to perform the contract so you don't want to cancel the contract so these are the two options that the person whose contract has been breached he has that the aggrieved party has first he can consider the contract as breached right away when the promiser does the anticipatory breach or the second option is he can wait till the due date of the performance and on the due date if the promiser does not perform then he might consider it as breach that is he might consider it as actual breach so he might wait till the actual date of performance so if he considers it as broken on 4th jan that will become anticipatory breach but if he waits till 10th jan and considers it as broken on 10th jan that will become as actual breach so these are the two options available now this the second option can be tricky sometimes 
you know i i come to your place on fourth jan and tell you i'll not be able to perform the contract so you give me time you tell me no worries the contract was due on 10th jan let me know on 10th jan if you can perform or no i'm giving you time till 10th jan and what happens is on 9th jan there is a earthquake that is happening that that has happened on 9th jan so in all likelihood there's you know destruction around there's rubble and there's debris around so construction can't be started the city has come to a standstill so what will happen is the contract by itself will become void on 9th jan now please remember that the contract has not been breached it has not been considered as breached the contract is still alive it is valid but on 9th jan due to impossibility arising in the contract it becomes void by itself now on 10th jan if i do not start with the contract you cannot come to me saying that i have breached the contract in that case i will not be considered as having broken the contract although in all reality i anyway would not have started the contract on 10th jan but now i get a shield now i cannot be you know told that i have broken the contract the contract has been breached by me because some impossibility has arisen in the contract now this impossibility may be anything let's say it was not an earthquake but the government has banned construction on the piece of land wherein i was to construct the house for you the government has or the court has come out with a order wherein we are not supposed to construct now if you would have opted to assume the contract to consider the contract as breached on 4th jan you could have recovered loss from me you could have claimed compensation from me the contract would have been considered as breached however if you give me time to 10th jan till the actual due date and on 9th jan the court brings out a order restricting construction on that piece of land now you do not get that right your remedy your right is taken away so this is the problem if you do not consider the contract breach when the promisor comes and tells you before the due date so this is the problem if you wait till the due date to consider it as actual breach there might be a case wherein some impossibility may arise there might be a case where the contract by itself becomes void and in that case you lose your right to compensation okay so this is an important point because you get two options either to consider the contract breach there and then or to wait till the actual due date but if you are waiting till the actual due date and something happens which leads the contract as void before the due date in that case you will not be able to consider the contract as breached because it has become void okay